We're going to get right into the Word of God. I'm going to read a scripture, and then I'll let you guys sit down. Um, the title today um, is kind of a two-fold title. And, uh, um, and, man, I was chewing on this word, and I was going over it with my wife, and we're, we're talking about it. That's, that's one of my favorite parts of, of doing the word, by the way, is just being able to talk over it with my wife. Love you, honey. She's watching from home right now. My daughter had dance, so they couldn't make it. But um, um, So the title is How to Live a Fulfilled Christian Life. And we're going to answer that question in a second, okay? Just for the sake of time, I'm going to go right into the scripture. 2 Peter uh, 9, and, it, and it's 3 through 9. And it says this. By divine power, God has given us everything we need for living a godly life. We have received all this by coming to know him, the one who called us to himself by means of his marvelous, glorious, and excellence. Glory and excellence. Verse 4. And because of this, uh, excuse me, because of his glory and excellence, he has given us great and precious promises. These are the promises that enable you to share his divine nature and, uh, and escape the world's corruption caused by human desires. We're continuing on. Verse 5. In view of all this, make every effort to respond to God's promises. Supplement or add to your faith with a generous provision of moral excellence. And moral excellence with knowledge. And knowledge with self-control. And self-control with patient endurance. And patient endurance with godliness. And godliness with brotherly affection. And brotherly affection with love for everyone. Verse 8, and we're done. Um, the more you grow, somebody say grow. Let's say that again. Grow. Grow. Like this, the more productive and useful you will be in your, in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, and we'll read through the last part in a second. You may be seated, all right? Um, how to live a fulfilled Christian life. Grow. You want the answer? Grow. Right? And this is not easy. Growth. It's, it doesn't feel good, but this is the truth about, listen to what the word fulfilled means. Fulfilled is satisfi satisfied or happy because of fully developing one's ability or character. Satisfied or happy because of fully developing one's ability or character. So this is why I want, want to let you know, take a note of this. You can't be fulfilled if you are not developing or growing. That's interesting, huh? You thought you can live a fulfilled life by just being complacent, by just chilling and just, we good, we got, we got everything's in place, everything's fine, my life is going to be, you cannot live. The very word fulfilled means Satisfied or happy because, somebody say because, of fully developing one's abilities or character. Right? So, so how do we live a fulfilled Christian life? Grow. First area we got to grow in. Well, first of all, this would be the foundation because it says add to faith, okay? So first you got to have a foundation of faith. Somebody say a foundation of faith. What does faith mean? It's, it's the conviction that God exists and is the creator and ruler of all things, the provider and bestower of eternal salvation through Christ, um, a strong and welcome conviction or belief that Jesus is the Messiah through whom we obtain eternal salvation in the kingdom of God. That's faith, okay? So we're talking about having faith in God, okay? Not faith in a man, not faith in our money, not faith in the government, not faith, I said this, I preached the other day, not faith in the stimulus check. I hit a nerve right there. That the, put your toes in, put your toes in. <laughs> right? 
I, and I, and I, I just, I just want to, let me hit that again really fast. Be careful, because when that check is gone, what are you going to do? What are you going to depend on next? Let's put our faith in God. So, so the scripture says, this is how we grow. Add to your faith a generous, somebody say generous, and I'm in verse 5, 2 Peter um, 1 and verse 5. It says, add to your faith a generous provision of moral excellence. Yes, moral excellence. This word moral excellence, it means a virtuous course of thought, feeling, or action, virtue, moral goodness, any particular moral excellence as modesty. I love this one right here. This, this is going to hit a nerve right here. Purity. Purity. Right? It means that, so we, we, we said faith first, which means we, we're believing in God, we're trusting in God for salvation, but now what we have to add on to faith is moral excellence. So what this means is, it means one of the words that stuck out is purity. What, what, what that means is that now that I, my faith is in Jesus and Jesus has become my Lord, I can't be sleeping with my girlfriend. I can't be cussing at work. See, see, it, this is what's interesting about this. It said, it, it said, a add a generous provision. Be generous with the moral excellence, right? I, I, I think some, if we're not careful, we walk the line of moral excellence. We're like borderline sinners, like. Moral excellence, moral, I don't know, what's the, what's the opposite of moral excellence? Uh, uh, I don't know, sinning, uh, I don't know, <laughs> right? But we walk the line, but it says a generous, in other words, I'm staying far from the line. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be generous with my moral excellence. I, I want it when you look at my life, I want you to know very clearly I am a man or a woman of God. Have you ever just seen somebody and go, he's a Christian? They're a believer. I, that, excuse me, sir, are you a believer? Yes, I am. I knew it. Moral excellence. Right? Ephesians 4 and 1, it says this, Therefore I, a prisoner um, for serving the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of your calling, for you have been called by God. We've been called by God, right? Another interpretation says this, live a life worthy of your high calling. And, and, and see, see, this is, this is, I think, one of the challenges is we don't realize it's a high calling. God is calling you higher. God has called you higher than the life you're living, than the life we've lived or we're living. God is saying, come higher, son, come higher, come higher. I know you're used to doing it this way. I know you're used to acting this way. I know you're used to cussing them out this way. I know you're used to talking to your wife this way. It's time to come higher. Right? God is calling us higher. Moral excellence. All right? Next one. We got to move. We got, we got, we, we're on the time limit here. We're on the time limit here. Um, and more, add to moral excellence, knowledge. Knowledge, this word, it means the general knowledge of Christian religion, the deeper, somebody say deeper, more perfect and enlarged knowledge of Christian faith, such as belongs to the more advanced, especially of things lawful and unlawful for Christian moral wisdom, such as seen in right living. Knowledge. In other words, you're a believer now. You have faith. You're, you're, you added some moral excellence. Now, let's learn about God. Let's, this God that we're serving, that we're proclaiming, let's learn about him. Let's read the word of God. Let's, let's, let, let's, let's be a disciple. Let's be a student, right? 
of the word. And, and, and I want to read a scripture. In 2 Timothy, it says this. 2 Timothy um, um, 2 and 15, it says, work hard so that you, pre- so you can present yourself to God and receive his approval. Be a good worker, one who does not need to be ashamed and who correctly explains the word of truth. Right? Another interpretation says, one who rightfully divides the word of of truth. As believers, I just want to say this. It, we should not, especially being a believer for some time, we should not be a believer for some time, some years, and still not know the word of God. You're a believer, you believe God, you love God, and you don't know the word of God, um, misquoting scriptures, I'm telling you, uh, it says add knowledge. Every day we should be eating, taking in the word of God every single day. The, the scripture says this, it says pray this way, give me this day my daily bread. I should be having daily bread. I should be having the word of God daily, right? And we're going to go, we're going to go for the sake of time. Here we go. The next thing we're going to add on is adding on to knowledge, self-control. Uh-oh. The virtue of one who masters his desires and passions, especially in sensual appetites. Self-control. You don't have to look. Again. And again, and again, right? Self-control. One of, uh, the, the scripture that I use, I really felt led to use. But the other thing is, and this is something that I, I practice, I am actively practicing uh, controlling my impatience and anger, right? I'm actively doing that. I have to have self-control. If I don't intentionally, and, and, and let me say this, because that's what I meant to say with, with growth, period. Growth is intentional. If you're taking notes, write that down. Growth is intentional. You will not grow if you are not intentional about your growth. And so, and so with this self-control, oh my gosh, talking about something intentional, if you are not intentional about self-control, there are things going on all around you that will make you lose control. The job, um, your kids, <laughs> right? It's the world, the world is bombarding us with things that will make us lose control. And if you are not intentional about having self-control, you will not be a believer that has self-control. Self-control. Proverbs 12 and 16 says this, a fool is quick, uh, is quick tempered, but a wise person stays calm when insulted. Why did I choose that scripture? God knows. For us Christi- uh, quick tempered people, amen, for all the quick tempered people say amen. <laughs> Gotta be my no, it's it's so funny, but it's so right. You 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 we have to be mindful of our temper. You 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 gotta walk and see if you if you got kids that you know strike nerves, you gotta walk in a house with the nerves protected. You got, you got to go to the door like this. <sighs> Honey, I'm home. Somebody say, be intentional. Somebody say, be prepared. Amen. Add on to your self-control, patient endurance. 
This means steadfastness, steadfastness, consistency, endurance, patiently and steadfastly, um, a patient, steadfast waiting for, a patient and steadfast waiting for, <laughs> a patient, enduring, sustaining, perseverance. Let, this is, this is the one that just gets a little, it's a little hard because the only way you build patience is things got to happen that usually you're impatient about. Nobody likes sitting in traffic. But the truth of the matter is, patience has to be developed. Somebody say develop. We have to be matured in our patience. And so, you're going to sit in some traffic. <laughs> this is the truth that I found to be so true. The thing that you're the most impatient about is what God is going to allow to happen to build patience in your life. It's a hard truth. Look at your neighbor and say, it's a hard truth. Um, write this note down. Developing Patience 101, have a toddler. <laughs> that's, that's my wife's wisdom right there. Does, does anybody got any kids that are two, three, right in that age right there, right? God bless you. Developing patience, developing patience, right? <laughs> James 1 and 2 through 4 says this. It says, Dear brothers and sisters, when troubles of any kind come your way, consider it an opportunity for great joy. Why? For you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance or patience has the chance to grow. There we go. So I, I always say this. I, I look at it, I go, whenever things don't go the way that I expected them to go, it is a time for my patience to develop. Honey, we supposed to have been there 10 minutes ago. It's time to go, honey. Hang out for a second. Let your patience develop. <laughs> So I say it's tight, but it's right. <laughs> add, add to your patience godliness. Oh, this is another one right here. Respect, reverence for God. This is one right here. This is one right here. Holiness. Holiness. Right? We should be developing, maturing into a holy man or woman of God. One of the words that stick out with holy that becomes very relevant is that my life is set aside for God's use. That, that I develop to a place that I set my life aside for God's use, holy, godliness, reverence. I reverence and respect God so much that there's things I can't do. There's things I won't do. There's things I won't say. There's places I won't go because I reverence and respect God, and my life is set aside holy for his use. Amen? Godliness. And we're going down to the last one. Let me give you a scripture for this. I love this scripture. And even the way this reads in the NLT, it says, um, in 1 Timothy 4 and 8, it says, physical training is good. I'm trying to get some physical training in. I've been trying to get it in a little bit. I just need some help being consistent. Like, 
But training for godliness uh -huh. is much better. Ha. Uh -huh. Promising benefits in this life and in the life to come. Promising benefits in this life and the life to come. Let me, let, me, let me say something about that. There is nothing in life more fulfilling than being used by God. You will not find anything in life more fulfilling than God using you to touch, change, love another person. It is the most fulfilling thing you will ever experience in life. And how do you experience this? Godliness. Set your, aside for, your, your life aside for God to use it. Amen? So powerful. It's so true. It's so true. And we're, and we're wrapping it up here. Last one, last couple. Next one, brotherly kindness. Add to godliness, brotherly kindness. Okay? This means love of brothers or sisters. Love of brothers or sisters. Brotherly love. It's, it's literally even talking about in the faith. This is what I find to be so interesting. Um... Before we became believers, really put our best foot forward to start living for the Lord and being who God has called us to be, living God's purpose, it was like those people we were hanging with, you can cuss each other out, punch each other, beat each other up, get drunk, kick each other, shoot each other accidentally. <laughs> Some of y'all laughing because you've been, you've been shot by one of your friends. You're like... Dang! <laughs> stab, you've been stabbed, bro. You good, bro? I'm good, dog. I'm good. Just call the, call the doctor, bro. Call the doctor. <laughs> right? But we become believers in the household of faith. And you sitting in my seat. Oh, no, he didn't. Oh, no, he didn't. Oh, 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 no, he didn't. Oh, 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 no, he didn't. Why are we so, so, so offended when our brothers and sisters do small, minute things to us? It's like we, we become Christians and our skin, is, it doesn't get tougher. It's like it gets softer, squishier. I let Pastor Joe crack me up the other day. He said, squishy. <laughs> we, get, we become Christians and we get all squishy. <laughs> Offended. Let, let me give you some insight. Let me give you some insight to help you. Because this is why. The enemy makes that small, minute thing seem so big because he know, he knows this, that if you can agree with your brother, if you can come in unity with your brother or sister, starting with your wife or your husband at home, it is one of the most powerful relationships, unity in the universe that will happen and, and there is nothing. Did I say nothing that you can't do when you walk in unity? Did I say that there is nothing that you cannot accomplish if you walk in unity with your spouse? That's why the devil doesn't want it to happen. That's why he makes small, minute things seem like they're so big and out of, and, and out of proportion. And, and, and he's whispering in your ear, did you hear what she said? Did you hear what he said? Did you see what they did? Did you see what he did? Did you see what she did? They didn't do nothing. Kick back. Kick back. 
It's nothing. It's small. It's small in comparison to your purpose. It's small in comparison to what God is going to do when you and your wife decide to get in unity. Oh, my God. I, 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 I've, I've learned it. I've learned it. I, uh, there, there's a saying. It's, it goes something like, um, some, some fights aren't just aren't, or, or battles aren't just, or aren't even worth fighting. It's just some things that you just, you, you, just, you just overlook them. They're not even worth going into. They're not even worth stressing about. You, you, you. I'm talking to the men. Let me give you a phrase, men, that will bless your life and bless your marriage. Okay, dear. I'm going to say it for this side. Okay, dear. It's so simple, but it's super powerful. <laughs> All the married men who know what I'm talking about say amen. Say it with me. Say it with me. Okay, dear. On this side, on this side. One, two, three. Okay, dear. Just, and just so you know, just so you know, I'm not being superficial. I'm being very serious. And I'm not saying say it in a sarcastic way. Okay, dear. We got to move on. No. Get your heart right. Understand the moment that you're in. Understand that this moment, this moment that you're deciding to argue can really mess some things up. It can affect your family, your purpose, your children, your ministry. Say okay, dear, with that in mind. Okay, dear. This is the word. We have to humble ourselves. We have to humble ourselves. Amen? Amen. Brotherly kindness. And I, I went into, um, you know, spouse, but I mean, brothers and sisters. If someone says, look at this in John, 1 John uh, 4, 19, 21, it says, if someone says, I love God, but hates his fellow believer, that person is a liar. This is the word that said this, not me. For if we, do, if we don't love people we can see, how can we love God who we cannot see? And he has given us this, what is it? What is it? I, I heard, probably, that was probably half. What is it? It's a command. To, uh, excuse me, those who love God must also love their fellow believers. Love one another. Love one another. Work it out. I'm hanging out here for a second because God's hanging out here for a second. Work it out. Talk it out. You may get a little loud. You may have to get a little loud, but work it out. Leave the room in unity. Leave the room. Leave away from that situation with it worked out. Humble yourself. I'm sorry. That's another one think we all need to practice and learn to say, right? I'm sorry. Work it out. And watch what God does. Watch the power that comes in your relationship from real love and unity. And this is the last one. It says, and love for everyone. And this is for, for everyone else. And this is, this is uh, agape. Affection, goodwill, love, benevolence. And there it is again, brotherly love or a love feast. 
love. Like, what, one of the things I love about this church, and you'll hear it to, to people who come from all over the world, I felt God's love there. When I walked through the parking lot, God's love was there. I felt God's love. And, and let, me, let, me, let me say this. It's very intentional. Just want to let you guys know that. From our pastors on down to the leaders in the church, the love of God is very intentional in this place. Amen? And so add love, okay? Um, and the scripture, uh, the scripture is, this is my command. It's uh, John 15 and 12. Love each other in the same way I have loved you. Another command. There it is again. Right? He commanded again. Okay? And, and 2 Peter, I'm, I'm going to continue to read this down. When we add these things on, this is what happens. 2 Peter uh, 8, 1, 8, and 9, it says, The more you grow like this, the more productive and useful you will be in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. And I'm going to read uh, on to 9. It says, But those who fail to develop, develop in this way are short-sighted or blind, forgetting that they have been cleansed from their old sins. Okay, and we're going to end here. And this is the truth about this, okay? I want to just make this point very clear, okay? All this list, and I pray you took notes. The truth is, all this list, we could, we could probably live it, you know, part of the time, do a good job for a second, not really be consistent. That's in our own strength. But I, I want to make it really clear the way that we walk this way consistently. Somebody say consistently. In Galatians 5 and 22, it says this, but the Holy Spirit hmm, produces this kind of fruit in our lives. It's, what's crazy about this is this in a different order, but it's the same thing. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against these things. Those who belong to Christ have nailed the passions and desires of their sinful nature to his cross and crucified them. Since we are living by the Spirit, living by what? That's the key. How can we do this? Come on, say it louder. How can we do this? By the Spirit. Let us follow the Spirit's leading in every part of our life. Holy Spirit, be my leader. I heard this, and it's so good. It's two words that don't go together. No, Lord. Because if Jesus is your Lord, it's yes to whatever he says. You say, well, I haven't really done that list really good. <laughs> I've been there. But the key is this is that we're maturing, we're developing, right? And, and that I love what this scripture says. It makes it so clear. We have to understand the way that we are going to do this. What are we talking about? Living a fulfilled Christian life, growing. The way this is going to happen is by the Spirit. You know, I've learned this. It's not all the knowledge that I get and 
what I've what I learned to do over time. That's all good. But one thing that I learned to be super powerful in my Christian walk that has been the most important thing that I'm learning as I mature is that I can't do it. (laughs) I will jack some stuff up. I am learning to submit to God. I am learning to follow the lead of Holy Spirit and say something like this, Holy Spirit, what would you have me to do today? With my children, Holy Spirit, how would you have me to respond to this? And and I'm gonna be honest, it's an active commitment that I'm practicing. I don't always get it right. It's an active commitment. And this is what we're talking about, is an active commitment, being intentional about growth, right? About allowing the Holy Spirit to lead and direct our lives. We're done. And this is my call. I, and we can all stand, please. You know, what, is, what a sermon like this is just, There's one thing that just becomes very clear when you hear all these things about love and walking in love and being self-disciplined. And when you hear all these things, you go, man, that's a lot. I don't know if I can do that. That's That's hard. God, you don't know how much they get on my nerves. I'm supposed to be patient with them. That's a hard one, Jesus. Relax. What he's saying is, I'm going to do it through you if you allow me to. My job is to allow God to be the Lord of my life. Spend time with him. You want, you, you want me to give you an action step that will help you really move in this direction? Spend time with the Father. We get so rushed. We get up. We look at our phones. We're out. We're leaving. We get up late. I'm, we, and we're, we're so rushed. We're rushed, rushed, rushed. And because of this, we're moving ahead of God. We're moving out of the grace of God. And he's there. He's there saying, I'll help you, son. I'll help you, daughter. I'm patient. I'm loving. I'm kind. It's all right here in me. Spend some time with me. I, I don't need, Pastor, I don't even know how it works. It's so crazy. And I, I, I say this all the time in my P12. When, when it comes to prayer, time with God, it's When I do that, this is what happens. The miracle of results. I don't even know how it works. Well, I know how it works because it's him doing it. That's how it works. But it's so amazing when you're walking in it and you see something that you were very impatient about and because you spent time with God that day, God just gives you supernatural patience. Holy Spirit just rises up in you, and you go, oh, it's nothing. It's okay, dear. It's amazing. God is real. And his spirit is present. And he's waiting to lead us into the good life and purpose the fulfilled life that God has for us. Amen. This is a call I want to make. First of all, if you do not know, first of all, like the scripture says, the first step, add to your faith. First step is faith. Our belief in God, that we believe that God sent his son 
Jesus to die on the cross for our sins. Why is that? Well, he sent this son because we're all sinners. The scripture says this, that we have all sinned and fallen short of God's glorious standard, right? And, and, and it goes on to say that the wages or the penalty for sin is death. We know what death is, but there's a scripture in Revelations where it talks about the second death, and that is the lake that burns with fire and brimstone. It is eternal punishment for our sin. This is where Jesus becomes very relevant. Jesus, it's a scripture. I love the scripture. It's one of my favorite scriptures. I believe it's going to be known from the ends of the earth before, before he comes back. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him would not perish but have everlasting life. Won't you receive life? You may be in here tonight and you say, I don't know about this, Jesus. I don't know what you're talking. You're talking about God. I don't, I don't really know about that. Well, the first step is this. It says that you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God rose Jesus from the dead. What is that? It's confessing with your mouth that God sent Jesus as the perfect sacrifice for our sin. How did I end up a sinner? That's crazy. I didn't do nothing. No. It was Adam and Eve. It was Adam. It's what they did. And because of what they did, every man, what did they do? They disobeyed God. Every man or woman born after that was born a sinner. That's what we got. There's no good work. There's nothing you can do that can wash away that penalty. The only thing that can wash away the penalty of our sinful state is what Jesus did. He died on the cross over 2,000 years ago, shed his blood as a payment for our sins. And this is what's so awesome. He ascended, he arose again on the third day and he ascended up to heaven. And the scripture says this, that he's making intercessions. He's praying for us. He's praying for us. Somebody's here in this room right now because he's praying for you. And this is, I could just hear the prayer right now. Father, give them another chance. They're gonna receive me. What are you receiving? Life, a good life here, purpose, fulfillment, and life more abundantly. Life eternal with a loving God who loves you dearly. So if you do not know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, this is my call. I want to give you that opportunity to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Right now, I know your heart, your heart, you feel it in your heart. It's fluttering. Well, he's talking to me. He's talking to me. You're not here by coincidence. God is talking to you. What about this deal wouldn't you like? Is it the fact that he will give us joy unspeakable, full of his glory and love? Is it the fact that, like I said, he wants to give us life life more abundantly, a good life here? Is it the fact that he wants to bless you? Is it the fact that he wants to be there, be your father, your loving father? What about this is not a good deal? What about this would make us say, no, I'm good, I'm good. We've been, we've been learning about a good father. And the truth is, all goodness comes from God. Every good and perfect gift comes from Him. And this is another simple, very simple truth. All bad comes from the devil. Which one do you want? The good that God has to offer or the bad that the enemy, the devil, we've all experienced that from Him. So this is the call. 
at the count of three, if you want to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior, I want you to raise your hand. And you can raise it before three if you want. One. Two. God is tugging on your heart. Don't leave that hand down. I see that hand already. Three. Every hand go up. Who wants to receive Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior? Who wants to start a life of purpose? Experiencing a loving Father. This is the next step I want you to do. I want you to all come to the front. All come to the front. Everyone that raise your hand, I want you to come to the front. This is, this, this is also, and, and God is dealing with your heart, come to the front. If God is dealing with your heart, come to the front. I, I tell you, give them a hand as they come. Give them a hand as they come. This is the next call I want to make. And come, if God is dealing with your heart, please come. It's not too late. This is the next call that I want to make. You may say, you know what? I, I believe in God. But the truth is that what God spoke today, I have not really been applying myself to growth. I have not been intentional about developing as a believer. I want the ones who would say that I want to make a new commitment today. I want you to come to the front. Those that are saying, you know what? I want to be from this day forward. I want to be intentional about my growth as a believer. I want you to come to the front. It, th this is the thing. This is the thing that I that I that I feel that that happens sometimes. Is that if we're not careful, we care about what people say, what people think. Let, let, let me ask this question: What's bad about wanting to grow? What's bad about wanting to be better? What's bad about wanted, wanting to fulfill our purpose? Right? Nothing at all. All right. God bless you. And as we're, we're going to pray right now, as we're praying, you can still come. Please feel free to come. Thank you, Lord. Even online right now, for those who do not know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, we're going to say a prayer right now. Say this prayer with us to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior and start your new life. Say this. Repeat after me. Say, Jesus, I believe you died on the cross for my sins. I believe you shed your blood for my sins. I believe you rose again on the third day. I believe you ascended up to heaven and you sit on the right hand of the Father. Jesus, be my Lord and Savior. Be the Lord of my life. Lead me and guide me and to my purpose in Jesus name now let me pray for you right now in Jesus name Lord I pray that everyone that said that prayer right now first of all we bind the enemy that had a hold on lives here right now we break every assignment of the devil we break every curse of the enemy in Jesus name even those that came up to say I want to grow I'm making a new commitment to grow. Holy Spirit, fill us afresh. Lead us and guide us. We submit to you. We say it, say, say it with me. Say, have your way, Holy Spirit. 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 Right now, I pray for your people, God. Touch them in Jesus' name. They will never be the same. They will never be the same. Everyone that came up here, they will never be the same in Jesus' name. And we seal it in your precious blood, Lord. In Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Amen and amen. Right now, 
as they're praying online, your next step, you can go to igotsaved.com. Go to igotsaved.com. There's some information there that will show you your next step. Even for everyone that is here, let me mention this, but as we're leaving, one of the major steps to growth, I mentioned it a little bit, is discipleship. This is the question here that we have here at the Way Road Outreach that I want to ask you. Who is discipling you? Who is discipling you? You want to be intentional about your growth? Get a mentor. Get a disciple, somebody to disciple you. We have what we call Power of 12. They are care and growth groups. You can go on the Way Road Outreach app. Go under the Power of 12 tab, and you can actually sign up for a care or a growth group. Also, if you're in this room, you can go and get information in the foyer or just go on your phone on the app and get plugged up with a, a Power of 12 or a care or a growth group. It is super important for growth. Also, like, like we talked about, our, our discipleship classes, our next phase of discipleship classes is starting. You can also go on the app and know a little bit more about when that next phase of discipleship classes are starting. We love you. God bless you. Have a wonderful night. Remember, if God is for you, there's no one can come against you. God bless you. Love you.